Hey everyone, today we are doing our first Frank and Switch episode, which is going to be a new short segment where we talk about Switch combinations and mods. And today, we are starting with a super simple combination that yields strange and unique results. It's definitely not for everyone, and it might not even be for me, but it is the Holy Oreo. So, what happens when you take two tactile switches? One known for its rounded feel and long, clacky stem, and the other, known as one of the lightest stock tactiles in the T1 family. Well, let's break it down. So both switches required for this Frank and Switch feature a palm stem, a poly top, and a nylon bottom housing. The Glorious Panda, or the Drop Holy Panda, have a long spring and a very long stem which produces a nice, loud clacking sound when it hits the bottom housing upon bottoming out. The Oreo, on the other hand, has a shorter stem that doesn't make a loud clacking sound as it doesn't seem to hit the bottom of the housing. Both switches have the typical tactile bump followed by a small amount of linear travel. So we have the tactile bump, linear travel. And the stem sticks out a little bit given its length. The clacking sound you're going to hear is the stem hitting the bottom. Now for the Oreos, tactile bump, travel. Tactile bump and travel. And as you can see, the stem is actually short enough to where it's not clacking against the bottom housing. So this is uh, one of the main things that the mod is going to be changing. So, what exactly are you going to be modding here? Well, truthfully, not much. Since the Oreo already has a very light spring at a nice 62 gram bottom out, we can't really spring swap it down without having stem return issues. So, we're going to do the unthinkable and just do the most basic thing imaginable. And that is this. Yep, that's it. But don't be fooled, because it's not a minor change. The stem of the Glorious Panda, or Halo stem if you use that, is so long that it actually hits the Oreo's bottom housing sooner and more abruptly than you might expect. This not only adds significant stem clack, but it also effectively shortens the travel distance of the entire push. The most interesting effect, however, is this. The Franken switch completely removes the linear travel that occurs after the tactile bump present in nearly all tactile switches, leaving a key press that is all tactile bump. To put it simply, the tactile bump that starts at the top of the key press does not drop off into linear travel, but instead travels with the key press to the very bottom of the press, bottoming out with you. This switch is in it for the long haul. Compared to the Panda. So, this is definitely an odd Franken switch. It's highly tactile with a short and travel distance and bottoms out at the very tip of the tactile bump. Is this appealing? Well, to most people, probably not, but it is unique enough and easy enough to try, even for the novelty of it. I actually remember seeing a few posts of people asking for tactile switches that felt closer to the tactile feeling membrane keyboards that they used to use where there is no linear travel at all, and the bump goes from the top all the way down to the bottom. This is probably the closest you can get to that with MX switches. Now, if you typically bottom out on every press anyway, you might actually enjoy the feeling of the switch. However, it must be said that without linear travel, the bottom out is very abrupt feeling and even a little violent. Putting in progressive springs would not change this, as there is no linear space for resistance after the tactile bump ends. There's just a crash into oblivion. Alright everyone, well thanks for watching, and if this video is entertaining, please subscribe to the channel. It means a lot, and we'll see you in the next one.